Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this final series for the Shoutcraft Invitational number four, with Stefano currently leading two games to nothing against Thorzane. And in this epic series, the blood has left my hands. My hands are so cold, it's all in my head right now. And I'm feeling a little bit dizzy. As long Pretty as it's just your games. head. Yes, nowhere else, don't worry. I don't know, um, man. This is some pretty good Zerg play. Yeah, it's not too bad. I could do better. Oh, right. I could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. Don't worry, Stefano. I got you back. All right. Game, Numero 3. Under toi. Antigua Shipyard. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Good luck. Have fun call by me Let's only. see if Thorsen can turn it around on this one, because if he can't <laughs> turn it around here, he's most likely going to end up just losing 4-0. Oh, it gets if you go down three zero in a best of seven, it gets so difficult. With to come loser back from. picks as well, you know, you you wait, making your way through this series like ah, I picked Shakura, lost. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, that, that's stressful. And then he goes on to Antigua, which is of course a map that Stefano has done very well on historically. Yeah. So let's see how it goes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to bring you Mouse Sports Thursday, and he is in the red trunks, and he <laughs> is playing Terran to the south of this map, which is of course the Antigua shipyard with no gold bases versus his opponent Millennium. Stefano. He is in the pink trunks and he is playing Zerg to the north. And if I remember correctly, Thorzane versus Don Regu in the DreamHack Valencia finals, um, I think that he lost, it was a best of five, I think. Yes, it was. And he lost the first two games in a row. Yep. I, I really do think he lost the first two games and then he came back to make it 2 2 and he it did. went to the epic final. Which was on Antigua, if I recall correctly. Yeah. yeah. So. He's, he's been in this position before. Uh, that was the, the one scenario I could think on the top of my head against a Zerg player. Yeah. Uh, but he's done it before and he can most definitely do it again. And he's only 2-0 down, not 3. It isn't match point yet. Definitely. Yeah. So he can definitely come back here. And this is certainly... The thing is though, every game he loses, he gets another map choice. Uh -huh. um, and I wonder especially in a best of seven, that he's not always going to pick his favorite map first. That's very true. Bear um, man, he's only picked one map so far. The first pick went to Stefano because he won right, the coin yeah, flip. So right. He picked Shakuras and lost. Okay, now he's on Antigua. He's got a long-term yeah. strategy. The problem, I suppose, is that while he fought very well against Dong Rei Gu on this map in Valencia, that was the older version with the gold bases. Yeah. So he did have a bit of an edge there that he now doesn't have. <laughs> yeah. The, the kind of overall game style, I think he used uh, mech against... Uh, he did, Dominic if Gudel, I recall correctly. He won't use it here, um, especially against Stefano. Stefano's way too smart for that. And Dom Regu is playing a kind of Muta link style every mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Um, but Stefano definitely... Stefano is be will play any style. He's totally fine with that. Funny enough, Stefano... I don't notice a lot of muters really from Stefano. Are no, he's not, he, he can be, but he's not really one of those guys. He's no. always... I mean, the... <clears throat> The style that made him so good in this matchup was basically mass links, and uh -huh. it took a very long time for people to actually adapt to that because people were still making tanks. Yeah. People were pushing out with four or five tanks at the 10, 11 minute mark, and were like, all right, well, you know, I'm going to do my standard push. And Stefano came at you with nothing but links, and you just died. Yeah, you can't, st you can't stand up against that. It's it incredibly like, efficient as well. Why do I have tanks? Uh, <laughs> tanks <laughs> yeah. really aren't going to make a difference there. And I remember the first time that uh, somebody actually beat Stefano, and it was alive. And it was in the IPL3 Grand Finals in Atlantic City. Yep. And I've said, I, I remember the game specifically. I, it was on, I don't remember the map name, but I remember the, 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 the game. And it was like, he built tanks. He lost a big wave and expected. And it was like, Stefano's was going to win another. There is a Terran game. And then all of a sudden, the, the next wave was put pure Marine. Yeah. And it was just nothing but Marines, well upgraded, and Stefano couldn't keep up. And there was drops all over the place, and that was kind of the, the first time when somebody started to react to it. And I remember Boxer too, Slayer's Boxer was sitting in the back, and we're watching the games together. And um, he goes, so many Zerglings, you know, as they say Zerglings, yeah. and it was laughing at Stefano. And then Boxer played against Stefano as well and beat him one game also by doing, uh, you know, something a little bit different. So yeah. his style was broken down quite a bit. Uh, especially by the Koreans, but here Thorzane hasn't gone for a third command center yet. It's still time. There's still time to do it. He may just stay for two uh, this time around. Mm -hmm. and has gone for his regular gas and then into his factory uh, for those Hellions. And meanwhile, this map is a little bit harder to grab that third base compared he's, to Metalopolis. Yeah, so. he's going to try and do it anyway, though. He's uh, got the command center on its way up there. So this could be very interesting indeed. Because of course, then Stefano's in a position where either he's going to do damage or he's going to try and stay one base ahead and take a fourth, which gets even more awkward. Yeah, Stefano's not mining gas now, so he stopped. And I wonder if, I mean, is he going to try and grab a third base? I mean, we saw, you know, how Thorzain played against Dark Force, and that was so efficient. But yeah. And then we saw how Rhett was also using extra queens, uh, queens and creature humans to spread faster. 
um, against it. But it looks like Stefano's... Well, the six minute mark is when he should be looking to do it. And so far he hasn't mined any more gas and it looks like he's just going to go ahead and do it. So there goes the drone and we are going to have a fast third base from Stefano here. So this is going to be more of a drawn out game compared to that last one for sure as both these players settle with expanding rather mm. than doing anything aggressive. Yeah, I thought Zanisage certainly scout that immediately, I would think. You know, it yeah. would be crazy not to, considering uh, he's going up against a player that he knows pretty well. These guys do meet each other fairly regularly in tournaments and on the ladder. Hasn't looked at it just yet. He doesn't see a lot of creep spread, but he's, now he's going to check in immediately. And he can't stop it, certainly. He can't deny it. Hellions don't do enough well, damage. Yeah, I mean, if he did try to do that, that would allow Stefano to put creep on the low ground. Would, and yeah. then eventually he'd just get a surround with Lings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of an awkward situation. Um, those six Hellions, four out, two more in production. And it looks like these barracks are going to go into double tech labs. Or is he going to put a factory on there? Looks like he's going to put a factory, surprisingly. Oop. What are these Oop. barracks doing? It's like musical barracks. Pretty much. In, out, in, out, shake it all about. Oh, yep. he's going to go tanks early. This is interesting. Or is it Blue Flame Hellion still? Could be, but could be the Blue okay, Flame tanks. Hellion build. No, it is indeed tanks. That's interesting because we don't really see that many people use tanks early on anymore. Um, simply because that any pushes are beaten down like the way we spoke about of, of Stefano's Stefano style. Just goes late. So. Yeah, exactly. That's an interesting decision, unless he wants to try and get tanks on the higher ground and, and really pick up that third command center and basically expand at around the nine minute mark and just use tanks to defend it. Potentially, yeah. Um, that may be something that Thorzain is looking at here. Meanwhile, that third base is up for Stefano. Uh, the drone count currently at 41, or 42, sorry. And spine crawler in really good position there, covering those spines, uh, covering those creep tumors. Yeah, fantastic. He'll be able to get that creep <coughs> spread up no problem at all. And we much now joined up there, so he's got easy mm. reinforcements through to the third, and the harassment potential of these Hellions has been minimized to the point where they're not really a big threat in that regard anymore. I'd actually like to see Thorzane maybe just pull them back now, just because it's getting a little bit risky to leave them there. But the lair is quite late, honestly, for Stefano, because he did take that quick third. He even put up a macro hatch as well. Yeah. And as a result, these guys aren't under any threat from muters yet. Yeah, there's a double evolution chamber, and you know, that is the Stefano style that he was so famous for in Europe for winning or beating every Terran player there is by going double upgrades really, really fast, mm -hmm. working on his Zerg upgrades. Uh, meanwhile, we do have a bit of a push in the center, and this is not really going to work out so well if on creep and oh he's, he's trying to get a surround creep but... and uh, he's not going to be able to get that surround good positioning right there for Thorzane and the marines to back them up as well and marine hellion tank will be effective but does he have the numbers more to the point the answer is by the looks of it no he simply does not and the push is defeated in the center with heavy losses for both sides but honestly it was tanks lost there and just a bunch of zerglings yeah, and Zerglings are basically free. Um, yeah. I mean, he's he can drone up to like 70 or four hatches, easy yeah. peasy. So. It was actually quite efficient for Thorzane, funnily enough. You look at the resources spent, but I mean, mm. it was a lot of lings used to make that work. But still, it's it's minerals. Yeah. It, it's minerals that's easily replenished and it doesn't really matter all that much in hell. He might even lose a heli in here if he's not careful. And that's a good position for Thorzane there. Yeah, but he's still going to end up losing two hellions there and a couple of marines as well. So. 32 more links in production, man. He's not going to let Thorzane take this easy third base. He's no, just going to pile on the pressure. And this is similar how Rep played earlier against Thorzane. And when Thorzane tries to grab a third base, he is very low on units, especially because losing the tank earlier on as well. 44 more links. And Stefano is not joining up behind this, man. He's just building and building and building. And he's going to launch himself at Thorzane when all these links. Look at the minimap. Oh, my God. And they're at 1-1 one, one upgrades now. And these Marines are just at zero zero. The plus one is combat shield is twenty even seconds. Done. Combat shields is another thirty forty seconds. The links are coming in at the perfect time as no far as I'm concerned. Tech. Oh man, th this could be a good game right here potentially. Stefano throws a ton at oh, Thorzane. Wow. The Look tanks are annihilated. Plus one, plus one. This is classic Stefano through and yeah. through. Thorzane fell right into the trap here. It's taking a lot of economic damage as a direct result. And yeah, this is this is hard. And now he's joining up. And now he's just, oh, he's got such a good lead. Yeah. Um, this tank is going to go down as well. Oh. Uh, not enough repairs, and he even slips his way into the main base and defends as best he can, but he's taken a pounding economically. He's got nothing but Marines and SCVs left. Workers killed 27. 40 SCVs versus 60 drones now, 11 more in production. Pathogen glands finished, Infest is coming out shortly. 
doesn't matter about all those mules. They're going to help, but Stefano is so far ahead, and, you know, that's the reason why we don't really see tanks that often anymore, because of play like this. Just straight, straight up upgraded oh, links. wow. It's funny that it's kind of prophetic that you talked about it earlier. It's like, this is the kind of thing that can happen, and Thorsen goes and does the exact thing that yeah. this style is designed to counter, and it did. It's, it's, it's right back to when we first started seeing Stefano beating player after player, and it was not a good idea. And this is how he did it, and mm -hmm. he's doing it now again, yep. so... Meanwhile, he's at 73 drones now, he's gonna hive, he's got 16 lings in production, five more infestors, two two upgrades as well, plus two carapace is gonna finish first of all, and Thorze may actually be able to grab the flag and plant it on the Zalnoga Tower, but he's gonna also see down the hill that, oh, fourth base, ah, oh. yeah. Because that means that, you know, he's gonna get the gases there, and that's when the inevitable Broodlords and so on can start coming in. Thorsane is nowhere near ready to deal with Hive Tech. Absolutely not. And that's what that fourth base basically tells him, that Hive Tech is basically coming soon. And it is. It's, all, it's already halfway yeah. through to that, and Thorsane now starting to roll out. He's behind in upgrades for the moment, and that's causing him problems, certainly. And, oh, that was a massive freeze we're getting, right? Yeah. None of these guys, we actually checked this earlier. There's some weird battle net freezing going on. Nobody in the game is being affected by it, but yeah. it is still something of a pain and in the ass. Thorsane scanned and already seen the Hive as well building, so he knows he's actually actually playing like 24 24 minutes maybe yeah. I don't know I was trying to make that funny but it doesn't like, really I'm work, trying so. to I'm trying to it's like uh, what no, it doesn't work <laughs> yeah, it 24 gro fungal growth a big one the tanks are not deployed again and Thorzane once again blunders right into something like that this happened on Antigua before we saw that and it was devastating to him so that was not good for Thorzane at all Stefano just spent links to make that happen 54 he, more he's beating he's Thorzane with pure links basically obviously infestors are coming now to help but he's beaten Thorzane with pure links and well, Thorsen played the exact style yeah. which Pure Link can beat, especially if it's got double upgrades so early on. And those links struck at just the right time uh, as Marines well. Marines are about to be 2-1. That's going to help out, actually, in the middle of the map. He does have the middle of the map, but there's just not enough to hold it. 16 and Banelings on the way as well. Stefano's That's going to make things very stressful. let this happen, man. I don't think so. And moving in to engage as quickly as he can. Takes down the tank on the left flank as well, which is going to mean that when those Banelings actually go through, uh, he doesn't even need them. The, Thorsen doesn't really have a lot of units left yeah. there, but if he brings in a few Banelings, to detonate in the middle of that, and that's going to be absolutely massive. Yeah. Thorsen now loading up and going for a drop. He'll come around to try and snipe off the fifth up to the top here. Probably the best thing he can do is to start playing a little bit Gorilla Terran and in order to just avoid Stefano's main army. And these bailings aren't even Limp Biscuit bailings yet, and they're just going to be able to still beat him. And that reference was obscure as hell, by the way. And anyway, two medivacs are coming up, and it's pretty good though, isn't it? Okay. Um, rolling, rolling. Yeah, I'd be hating right now. <laughs> Say that for a fact. That was a good uh, touche. Uh, anyway, two medivacs, two drop into the main base. Going to be able to do a bit of damage here, but overall, Stefano's seeing that. That's a lot of units in the main base. Stefano's like, where are you not having units? at your front door exactly. and that third it belongs to Stefano and unfortunately that supply deeper wall not going to stop that many banelings either. The Hive just got killed I might add. Thorzen did kill it but I don't think he's got an answer to what's happening to the rest of his base. Yeah, the Old Shores Cavern's done anyway. He doesn't need the Hive anymore. Very much classic well, Stefano. Well, he's going to die now. But, but never mind. <laughs> no, I guess not. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't build any Ultras before that Is your that crystal dies. ball broken, by the way? I just have to ask that. Yeah. In the meantime, Thorzane is in a horrible spot, having lost a ton of units and being completely overrun. This drop has been one of the most effective drops I've ever seen, killing some amazing tech here, doing plenty of damage, but it will eventually, at some point, actually be cleaned up. It has forced Stefano to actually call off his attack. Yeah. Now in an equal game, that was like the best drop in the world. In this game, it's just like, uh, yeah, no, it doesn't make spines any Spines coming down, a single Marine heroically trying to bring down a spine crawler. But unfortunately, none of that really did any economic damage to Stefano. The, that's the worker's kill, 47 to 3. Killing the Hive and the Ultra Cabinet is great, but all that means is that Stefano's going to just keep playing Ling and Fester, which is, has done the job up to this point. I don't see why it wouldn't now. A massive wave of Zerglings goes into the third base. Thorzane lifts up once again, loses yet more workers. And does Thorzane yeah. really have what he needs to stop that from These happening? These Lings won't die. They're plus three carapace. They actually won't die. So That's ridiculous. Incredibly fast upgrade. Flowing into the base, a big Baneling detonation falls. Ghosts are just... You don't even hear Zerg units dying right now. You don't. It's just nothing but Terran screams. Thorzane, GG's. Thorzane screaming as well. Man. 3-0 already to Stefano, and Stefano switches to his classic style and proves that it is still equally as powerful, if 
your Terran opponent goes down a certain tech path, which he did, and there he goes. Stefano is... takes that again and looking it's very crazy, solid. Man. He's Three so zero. good, incredibly good. And Thor Saints fought really hard this tournament, has put on some amazing games, and obviously is incredibly good beating Rhett, but Stefano looks like he's on another level at the moment. Absolutely. This is the Stefano that won IPL, ESWC, Battle in Berlin, you name it, man. It's terrifying. You name it. I'm glad I switched from Terran, otherwise oh, I'd be having nightmares. Battle in Berlin, didn't he? Didn't, he didn't, didn't win, no, no, no Chio won Battle of yeah, Berlin, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh man, that is nasty to deal with. It really is. And the answer is not Marine Tank. It's not. No, it isn't. All right, we'll be going into the next game very shortly, folks. Can Thorzen come back and pull off the full reverse all kill in this tournament? It's going to be tough. It's going to be very it's gonna difficult. Be tough. We'll find out. If anyone can do it, Thorzen can. We'll be right back.